Welcome everyone to Mastering, uh, Mastering the Art of Podcasting here on Renewed. Uh, my name is Bruce Rhodes. I display as Renewed Network. Um, if you have any issues during the webinar today, you can just um, message me via the chat room. Um, now, Renewed is the open network for specialized subscription, membership, and event professionals. For the webinar today, everyone should be on mute. Um, if you have questions for today's speakers, just submit them on the chat and we'll make sure we get them to the speakers by the end of the day. If not, we might have some overflow into the um, afterwards on Guild and so forth, which I'll display on the chat as well. Uh, Tom Hagee is going to be your moderator for, that, for today. And I'm going to just let Tom introduce the speakers for today. And again, thank you for joining. Any issues or questions, please post them on the chat. Tom, go, go, go to it. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, it's my genuine uh, thrill to, to have uh, Kevin and Rebecca on today. Um, I'm a huge fan of their podcast. I will read a brief uh, written bio all the, rather than just go on and gush about them. But Rebecca Lavoie and Kevin Flynn, thank you for being here. Uh, really appreciate you sharing uh, your insights. For everybody, uh, Kevin and Rebecca are creators, producers, editors, co-hosts of several podcasts under their Partners in Crime Media banner. It's their flagship uh, show that, that drew me in called Crime Writers On. It started as, off as a commentary on Crime Writers On Serial, which was the blockbuster joggernaut uh, podcast that, I don't know, I, I looked at, I think it's had hundreds of millions of uh, downloads since it, since it came out. But um, they, they serve enthusiastic listeners with pop culture commentary. Uh, now, Kevin and Rebecca are, are joined by, uh, by two other crime writers, uh, Toby Ball and, and Laura, uh, Laura Brecker, Bricker, pardon me. And uh, they're also awesome. So these folks, they started off um, doing these. They're, they're also true crime writers. I really enjoyed both of your books, or, or I mean, some of your books, both of you. Uh, Kevin and Rebecca, you write them together. Uh, Our Little Secret, Notes on a Killing. I really like those. I've read the books of the other podcasters, so I could recommend them if you're into true crime. Uh, also, if you're into true crime, I mean, this is kind of a must, uh, a must listen podcast. But like, uh, like the great podcast Car Talk, uh, I could really listen to them talk about anything. Um, except, I mean, I know more about podcasts than I do about cars, but uh, it's just that kind of it's. It, it, they're entertaining, they're fun. Um, but in addition to the podcasts, the, um, Rebecca runs the podcast unit for New Hampshire Public Radio. Um, Kevin is an executive producer now of, is it of True Crime Media? Partners or, in Crime Media. Partners in Crime Media, pardon me, pardon me, Partners in Crime Media. Um, they do other podcasts. They, uh, mom and dad are fighting. Uh, Rebecca is host of the Netflix podcast, You Can't Make This Up. Um, she's one of the hosts of the Slate's uh, parenting podcast, as I said, mom and dad are fighting and I won't go on and on. You could read their, their bios, uh, another true crime, a couple, but a couple other true crime ones that I really like, uh, Kevin is the, I guess the host is the host of these are their stories where he takes episodes of law and order and has a, a great time doing that. And that's another case where I didn't even watch the show and I, I, get, I listened to it and get a kick out of it. Um, and then they also produce, you produce uh, Undisclosed, which mm -hmm. is an ongoing podcast about the subject of the serial podcast, Adnan Syed, who still, still is in prison. And many of us, many, many of us are convinced he has no business being there. So, but I won't, I won't get into that. Uh, so Kevin and, and Rebecca, I'm going to just jump right in. And thank you for not preparing at all. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's how we like it. Um, so, so I encourage everybody while asking the questions that everybody knows in the, in the renewed group, you can ask questions by chat and Bruce and I will monitor those and Bruce, you'll read those out to everybody, but Kevin and Rebecca first, I remember when you were getting started and you had no advertisers and you had a very, I knew the audience was growing. Um, so what. And, and the focus today will be about audience engagement. We won't get in too much into some of the other things, but what you guys have been exceptional at, I think, is audience engagement. And you obviously work very hard at it and pay attention to it. Um, 
but let's start from the beginning. So when you got started, what, what was going well at the start and what wasn't going so well? Well, I think what was going well, I mean, one of the things that we had uh, to our advantage, first of all, Kevin was a former broadcaster. So he brought that uh, to the podcast. He knew how to just be on mic and how to teach me to sort of be myself on mic. So that was one huge advantage we had. The other huge advantage we had is that I came from public radio and uh, now it's something that a lot of people know how to do, but public radio uniquely knew how to a capture an audience and grow an audience, but then uh, get what they call a core audience. So every public radio station in America has the goal of getting 10% of their audience to become contributing members to their station. So they have all these techniques and tricks that they do. They use you language. They engage directly into the ears of the people that they're talking to. They put the voices of people uh, in the audience on the air of the radio station. They do fun drives. They do all these things where they're talking directly to their audience. And that was something we did from the beginning. We took uh, listener questions. We said the names of our listeners on our podcast. You know, we tried to do like some circular engagement uh, with other podcasters. We like had other podcasters on the show. We talked about other podcasts. We try to boost and bring recognition to other podcasts on our show and, and tried to get our podcast uh, name on other podcasts. And, and we, we just tried to build that engagement from the beginning. And that worked really well. Um, the thing that didn't work so well from the beginning is that we didn't actually measure our audience from the beginning. So we didn't know we had one. For about a six months or so, we were hosting our audio uh, just on a Squarespace website, not on a real audio audience audio hosting platform. And it was only when we moved to a, tr a true audience uh, audio hosting platform that we were able to see that we had tens and tens of thousands of listeners. So uh, I would say that we would have been better served by doing that earlier, <laughs> right? Yeah, I thought the advantage for pub being in public radio is that you were able to get us a studio. Yeah, that was true too. <laughs> at the time. We knew how to edit audio too. That was helpful. Yeah. <laughs> we had the okay. tech side down. Yeah. Yeah. No, I still remember when you were saying, I could hear, I remember Rebecca saying, why don't we have sponsors? Why is no one sponsoring this? I'm, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. And then, and then suddenly it came out of the woodwork and started having them. And so but there, uh, there are, there were other ways and still are other ways to monetize a podcast. If, if one wants to do that, I, you know, I wouldn't poo poo the idea of doing a podcast that doesn't make money because it's still valuable, especially if um, you're promoting an organization or a cause or a business, but if you are, you know, if, if part of it, you need to be some return on investment, there are ways, and we've done this, one can be having a PayPal account, which is like a tip jar, and you just say, if you like the show, drop something in our tip jar at our website. Another way that we did it, and I believe they still do it. No, you can't do it anymore. The well, Amazon Smile program, can't do it anymore. Uh, podcast. No, uh, we, we did that, but I will say- the, well, let me explain it. Yeah, there was a uh, you could have. Well, th there are still podcasts or still websites. That websites do can do it. Yeah, podcasts can. On a website, uh, you can use like a link to uh, an Amazon product. So if oh, you're, you fun. know, so you could put the link on and get the code for you know this baseball cap. And if someone clicks on that link and goes to the buys the baseball cap, you get a little commission. Mm -hmm. um, right now, a lot of people are, are using this for, uh, you know, the commission is a part of a program called Smile, which is for nonprofits. But we were able to use it by directing people to go there, because in addition to the specific uh, items, you could just uh, have a, a link to all of Amazon. Yeah. So if somebody went to our link and then went to Amazon there, we got a commission on anything that they bought which you know so books or yeah. clothes or whatever and so we were able to make some money on that and people were very enthusiastic one of the ways that we got people built you know engaged in that is that we would have toby uh who is our very dry personality guy to read selected items uh in a, a, you know like this week you know on amazon and it would be like you what know, people had purchased people you know, Cat woman, litter, woman's shoes, <laughs> size nine, you know, and uh, then people started like <laughs> buying stuff, crazy stuff just to get on the list. You know, there was like there was the artificial insemination for dogs. <laughs> yeah. You Perfect. know, it was just yeah. like it was just crazy stuff because it became a bit. And then Amazon said, no, you can't do that because they have I no get, sense of humor. 
Yeah, I don't know something yeah, like a direct that. call to action. But what are some other ways to monetize? Well, I, I will just say for one, for your, for, for your niche content producers, if you have a niche audience, there are niche advertisers who want to reach the niche people you are trying to reach. So if you have an audience of 15, but they're all a specific type of people, I promise you there is somebody who wants to reach those 15 kinds of people and they will probably pay to have a mention in your podcast. Anyway. Yeah, yeah Rebecca. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say one of the, the ideas would be that Instead of, uh, you know, suppose you're an outdoors, uh, you know, podcast and you wanted a sleeping bag company to be the sponsor, you could like run, you pitch them on like running a lot of ads or something like that. But also if they became the presenting sponsor, it really doesn't matter sort of about individual ads because then it becomes, you know, outdoor hiking uh, sponsored by um, big sp- puffy sleeping bags yeah. And, mm-hmm. yeah. um, so instead of like trying to sell individual ads and 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 you know make a fulfillment you know the value isn't just sort of being the sponsor of the Brand entire yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 okay good well you've you, you've the, you, the um the thing with amazon i was i was ticked off on your behalf because like that was i loved that segment and and that was so right people were like buying i don't know bow ties for cats and stuff just just so they could hear hear toby read about it well that was great audience engagement go ahead here's the thing is that that actually speaks to something else that i think we do well that a lot of podcasts don't do well and you can do this with anything you can make any part of your podcast content you can make your introduction content you can make your outro content you can make your the boring business parts content where you have to thank people for doing something you can make any part of it engaging if you think of it all as a listener experience and don't think of it as something you just have to get through. And that's something that I cannot stress uh, enough because if you just have to get through it and read it and just smash it into your show, that means your audience is going to be fast forwarding back through it. So, And anything a- that you, you place a value uh, on, uh, you know, if there's a way to drop names and thank individual listeners where, you know, if it's somebody that puts money in the tip jar, if on the next episode, you say, somebody wrote you an email John Smith yeah. uh, for that. Uh, a lot of times on uh, podcasts that have a Patreon uh, component, they will, you know, go through the list of names for, you know, their new, their new sponsors or excuse me, the new patrons. So any kind of shout out that adds value to the listener as well. Yeah. The one thing to that point, even your advertising, Kevin used to, or I don't think you, you haven't done this any, anymore, but Kevin used to, uh, they'd be having this discussion about some murder show or something, and then some keyword, and Kevin would use this tortured segue, comically tortured segue into the ad. So somehow, I can't think of one right now, but he used to come up with these things like, speaking of blah, 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 and then you would start talking about what was the bra company or something. Uh, that sponsored you guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it that's was, making it was, the ad content. Yes. But I was sitting there listening, like, wait a minute, is Kevin about to do an ad? <laughs> <laughs> it was I, I think the first one was we were talking about making a murderer, and there's like they took the mattress because it was covered <laughs> with blood and burned it. And I said, so that's when you might want to get a Casper mattress. <laughs> It went into that. Yeah, exactly. But as a, as a listener, you kind of sit there, you know, in the back of your mind, Kevin's going to drop in something here at some point. So um, so that's a great point. So every aspect, every segment uh, can be the engagement. Um, one of my favorites, uh, and Conan O'Brien does a great job with reading sponsor ads. Uh, he just kind of makes fun of himself reading it. And so uh, so that is a good one. The um, Now you talk about identifying the audience that's, that's hungry for audio uh, content. I think that's kind of a natural for for this group, um, and uh, you know, because that the whole the whole mission of a lot of the, the folks in this group are uh, people who are looking for a niche, uh, niche niche folks. I mean, I see David Foster, and I think you know his his whole business is around valuing businesses and value. It's a uh, business value. What is it called, David? BVR, business valuation resources. So. So Listen up. <laughs> what's the, and uh, you think I remember, see, I'm not that smart. The, um, the thing is that they, uh, that's all they do. All right. Yep. So they, it's like, that's huge. Like some of his customers, I remember some of his authors and speakers, they were, they would handle celebrity divorces, you know, what's the value of, or whatever, or in an estate, what's the value of Kurt Vonnegut's estate. 
So it's a it's a super niche and super successful. I, I will I will tell you, you know what I hear when I hear that I hear a fantastic opportunity for a podcast because I guarantee David Foster, everybody that wants to learn a little bit about what you do or like the services that you provide or the knowledge that you have, the kinds of things you're willing to share when you give talks or whatever, your, your 10 minute talk, they don't have time to like read something, but they're probably on a treadmill. They're probably going for a walk. They're probably on a train. They're probably doing something and like a nugget that you could provide that they could listen to real quick. Like that is a, that's an opportunity for you. Like the thing that would be a blog post or a newsletter, you provide an audio version yeah. of that. They could listen to you on a plane and not have to get the Wi-Fi to read. Like that is an opportunity for you. Yeah. I've personally tried to do that on trains and planes with the people sitting next to me. And they tend to move away fairly well. <laughs> but the concept's a good one. So yeah. you go sit next to the guy with the tambourine. So yeah. the, um, well, the, the, uh, the only valuation case that's gotten any sort of business to consumer interest is uh, the IRS went after the Michael Jackson estate. It was their only big tax move of 2021. And that definitely had broader consumer interest because everybody wanted to hear about that so we, we do have some good stories thank you thank you for the suggestion uh, david this is our webinar by the way <laughs> <laughs> david does webinars oh i thought i was participating kill his mic kill his mic renewed uh bruce where the hell are you aren't you paying attention <laughs> um so here's, here's a i'll jump around a little bit no surprise to anyone uh what about ratings and and reviews of the podcast how important are they and how do you go about making them happen. All right. So ratings and reviews, it's a mystery, actually, how important they are. Uh, Apple in particular is a very popular listening platform. So is Spotify. They are the two most important listening platforms right now. And we know that because we can actually see on our audio host how people are listening to our podcast. What happens is you upload your audio file to one place. Uh, that turns it, they, that generates an RSS feed for you. And then you submit that RSS feed to Apple, to Spotify, to Stitcher, to Google. And then all of the other apps, uh, Overcast, all those other little apps, they all just scrape that data. You don't have to submit there. So your, your podcast ends up on all these different players. Um, so your audio host will show you on your day and your analytics, how big your audience is and how they're listening. So, um, Apple and Spotify are by far the two biggest platforms. If you are rated and reviewed, um, Apple used to take that into consideration in their discovery algorithm, and that would help you with their chart placement. It is unknown, actually, at this point, how Apple is doing their discovery algorithm. It's a mystery. Yeah. Um, most people think it's about discovery, like um, if audience numbers change greatly in one day, it might push you up the charts, but nobody really knows. It's not like Billboard. Right. You would assume the number one is the thing that got played the most or listened, right. whatever, that, that made the most money. We know money. it's not that. It's not that. It's it is much. that on Spotify, but it's not that on Apple. Not that, it is that on Spotify. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's a big mystery. But ratings and reviews do let potential listeners know that other people have listened to and liked your show. So they are, for that reason, incredibly important. So if you think about it, if you're looking for a book on Audible or Amazon and you, oh, and you open that title and you see there are eight reviews, you're going to be like, oh, that might just be like a little self-published thing that no one has actually listened to. Skip. But if you click on a book on Audible and you see it has 15,000 reviews and there, it's a four and a half star rating, you are much more likely to be like, I'll check that one out. Mm -hmm. Same thing with podcasts. Mm -hmm. So the way to get them is to ask your audience to give them to you. Directly ask right in your podcast. Hey, if you like the show, do us a favor. Go to Apple, give us a five or four star review, whatever you think. Yeah, I would also argue that if you go to that eight review podcast and it's five stars, you might be more likely to listen to it than the podcast with two stars that has 11,000 reviews. Correct. So you just, you know, some people value different things, but uh, yeah, the number of reviews is probably related to the size of your audience, but your stars ought to be related to the quality of your content. Right. Right. Okay. I had no idea that I, f I assumed Apple, like the number one was the number number one. No, by it's Gilbert. a mystery. I know what it is. <laughs> Somebody, there's money there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. I'll, I'll just make an accusation there. I can't libel <laughs> a company. I'm sure there's a lawyer listening. The uh, So, okay. Well, that, that solves that mystery, that it's a mystery. Um, 
so let's let's get to the core of it so best practice for practices for engaging your audience audiences and i I have kind of the the stock question what works well and what doesn't work well um what what do you think you're doing now and i can say that you were good from the beginning um i remember i shot you guys a note uh, because you give your contact information out and uh, shot you guys a note about I don't know, production values, because Rebecca is a real stickler for production values. I'm sure Kevin is too, but Rebecca, that seems to be your thing. Like you'll criticize the podcast, no matter how good it is, you'll also say, you know what, they could have actually, the sound could have been way, way better. So I remember shooting you guys a note, asking you a question, and my phone rang and it was Rebecca. I don't even remember, (laughs) you probably don't remember this. I remember that, yeah. (laughs) you You said, oh, get one of these, this mic I went out and bought because Rebecca said to get it. And Zoom wasn't a big deal then, but you knew that the audio, the way they did audio on Zoom was, uh, was better than what I was using. One of the best things about it is that it records everybody on separate tracks, which makes that editing a bit, a bit easier. Um, so what, what would you say works well uh, that you're, you're doing to engage your audience? What, what are think, the best things? Let's alternate tips, shall we? Uh, I would say a huge thing for us is transparency, um, letting like, becoming characters in our own podcast, showing enough of who we are um, to be, you know, without being overly revealing, like, you know, if Kevin and I are having a marital argument, that's real. We're not bringing it on the show because that's a, on Patreon. people, people do that. not need to know. And also like, that's not actually interesting. Um, but being transparent about the things that are happening on the show, if we're making a formatic change to the show, why, how, where, and being transparent that we know that you are listening. So addressing the audience as, you fair listener like we know we're we're including you and that is part of the transparency so i would say for me that is a huge part of the engagement process what mm-hmm. about you yeah i my, my earlier background was in commercial radio and the stats then showed that only about three percent of your listening audience engages with you uh and it's a lot radio we're speaking here and, and so by extension podcasting is a lot more intimate. You can't, you would never think to try to call up, uh, you know, NBC and ask to talk to Mariska Hargitay because, you know, there's this sort of, you, you already know that it's, it's sort of removed and whatnot, but you would call your local DJ um, to, you know, ask for, uh, you know, uh, make a request or something like that because it seems closer. It seems more intimate and it's more intimate because it's literally right here in your ears, lots of people listen and speakers and whatnot, but most of the listening is done sort of right here in your ear. Uh, so I think one of the things is to remember how intimate it is and to treat your audience as intimate. Yeah, I would say along those lines, um, try to create super users always. So we've done that by a newsletter and our Facebook group, which is you have to actually answer a couple of questions to get in. And that's how we know the group is only people who actually listen to our show. So one of our questions is like, who's your favorite person on the podcast? There's only four of us. It's like, who's your favorite crime writer? Right. And it should, should be one of the four of us. And yeah. someone puts an Agatha Christie, it's like, dump. Yeah, we're not, not, we're not letting you in. Um, so we, we basically have just curated, and it's about 10% of our, you know, probably 10% of our like weekly list or monthly yeah, listening actually, audience yeah, yeah. is, is it, we're our weekly listening audience is in the group. And those are our super users. Mm-hmm. And, the, and about also, it's the same number about as our news, newsletter subscribers, about the same number of people. And the thing about the super user is like, I feel like I know them all by name, not really, but like most of them, if I saw their name, I'd be like, oh, that person's in our Facebook group because they sort of participate a lot. Mm -hmm. And those are the the listeners. Those are the super users that if you need something and you ask, you will get it. So if you really like your downloads are a little flagging, or if you have a new show that you're launching or uh, you want to sell a t-shirt or you have another link that you want them to click on, Hey guys, I'm working on this project at work. Would you please click on this? Whatever they will do it for you. And, and it it feels like a transaction because you've given them more and you've given them a relationship. They will in turn engage back with you and you're creating this like circular engagement situation. Yeah. yeah, one other thing, and I don't know what, if, when I get to the end of this comment, whether it's in, res, in response or if it's just an observation. Just launch yourself into it. Okay, so again, you know, a lot of folks, uh, they have uh, CD players in their car. They have their hookup with their 
um, with their Spotify and all that other stuff. But they tend to listen a lot. Tend to listen to the morning zoo radio, uh, even though they can get all that same music. They're there for well, the stats say primarily weather and traffic. But they stick around because they enjoy the personalities of the people. And you know, if you took your local rock station that's number one, and you change the music to polka, you would still get an awful lot of the same listeners coming back because what they like is not necessarily the content, but they're there for the people. So um, it's I think it's harder to do within maybe a newsletter, but if you're in a thing like a YouTube channel or a podcast where you know it's important for you to act for you as a personality to engage, to look in the camera, to, to you know, to be uh, somebody that they want to listen to so that it doesn't matter whether they're interested in this week's topic, they're still interested in you. Yeah. They want to hang out with you. They want to hang out with you. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. The, the one that I think about again is always was car talk. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No one cares about I whether or not somebody's guys. 1978 Chevelle has a smell in the back seat. Like no one, <laughs> no one cares about that. That was not what that show was about at all. For the longest time, I started realizing, God, people have really old cars. Then I realized I was listening to reruns. reruns. Yeah. yeah. And and one I, of them the one, had died. Yeah. One poor they, guy had. Yeah. Tommy. Yeah. I think. Oh. Yeah. They're playing uh, the show for like four years after he died. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Which was sad. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you can listen to listen to them talk about anything. Well, any more audience engage in audience engagement tips uh, before we move on? Because you I do mean, a great job with Facebook. Uh, too. Well, I'll, I'll say if you ask people for something and they give it to you, acknowledge that they gave it to you too. I mean, that's, that's true. That is the circular thing. You ask people to email you when they do acknowledge that they emailed you by reading their email on the air putting their email, like we ask people to tweet oh. us about things. Then we feature tweets in our newsletter. Oh, okay. uh, we, we have a cat of the week segment on our show, uh, which is Doesn't... always a cat. I mean, that was a joke. I mean, we just add segments to our show based on stuff that listeners do. That's actually how that happens. Right. Um, and then, you know, you can't ask for something and have people give it to you and then not show that someone did the thing that you asked for. That is, that is the that's oh. the key to the whole thing. That is oh. how you get people to stay engaged because then people always think like, oh, it could be me. We have a Patreon, which is one of our um, income mm-hmm. streams. We also have to, it's, it's a lot of work because we create content back there. Kevin has a segment on the show, our Patreon patron saints of the week. A big incentive for people to be part of our Patreon, I think, is that they may at some point just get their name on the podcast. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe that's an incentive, maybe not. But like mm-hmm. we are acknowledging, we asked you to do this thing and thank you for doing it. And we would like to recognize the people who did it. So oh, okay. yeah, that's a huge, huge part of it. Oh, these, so some of your listeners have self-esteem then because I, I sent you things. I just assume you won't uh, mention my name. Uh, oh, we like, will. Why, why would they possibly, you know? Well, we haven't, so you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you'd add value, Tom. No, yeah. um, the uh, so you start talking. Oh, yeah, the Laura Bricker uh, with the cat of the week. So that goes back to uh, transparency because Laura Bricker is a huge cat person. She also yep. seems to have a temper, but um, <laughs> she does. And right, yeah, by the way, cats and pets have nothing to do with true crime. Nothing reviews. Nothing. Oh, so it just it just creates. It creates she. It creates her character. Yes, it, it does. You know? It does, and you watch her take her dog for a walk, and the cat's walking with them too. Yeah, yeah. the cat's just jumping through the woods. I'm like, what the hell is this woman? You know, it's a. She's a yeah. weirdo. Yeah. We love yeah, her. We, yeah, we. You know, we know that her husband was a fire chief. Uh, I'm blanking on his name at the moment, but Ken, yeah, yep. yeah, and then and then Toby is your. You know, the, you you let the personalities come through. I, I doubt that Toby is as much of a curmudgeon as he. Uh, he is. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> he would fit right. <laughs> yeah, he would fit right in into an editorial shop. I think um, uh, he wouldn't be a hugger. He probably doesn't use exclamation points much. Nope. But yeah, but that cat of the week thing was like that. And like you said, sometimes it's a dog. Yep. Um, you know, and it's so funny that you know she put her cat up once, and it's like it looks exactly like my cat. Oh my yeah. god! My god! And there he is. Come here, buddy. Right on cue. I'm yeah. going to interrupt this. <laughs> All right, so we just take over the. I, show? Th- I think so. so. Just engage on social media with whomever so your look, audience exactly. is. Yeah, I so will doesn't, say. Doesn't this look like Laura's cat? Exactly. Yeah, exactly that's like what Laura's thank you for validating me. I'm going to hang him now. So that's that part of it. Oh, one one quick tip because there's <laughs> yeah. data around this. There's data that shows 
Social media is not the best driver for growing your podcast. It is the best driver for engaging with current listeners. That is a data point that yeah. is, uh, uh, the podcast industry has proven and shows. So you tweet about your podcast. Unless you get other people to tweet about your podcast, you're unlikely to grow your audience, but you're engaging with your current listeners. Yeah, the number one way is word of mouth now. Yeah. Um, as far right. as the discovery. Yeah, so people will recommend your podcast. So you need to ask them to recommend your podcast to a friend. And after what, and then don't stop asking. A lot of podcasts, their audience growth peters out. And like, how come it petered out? It's the way you stopped asking people to recommend the podcast. We need to keep asking. We forgot. We need to keep asking. Yeah. <laughs> well, the fact that you're doing this right now is part of your audience engagement. And here I am telling everybody how great this is. And, you know, I wouldn't do it if I didn't want you guys to succeed. If I didn't, you know, if I thought you were jerks or something, there, there are certain podcasts I've listened to. It's like, I know they're really popular, but I just don't want to help Joe Rogan. I don't know why, but uh, well, so I, mean, there's, I there's, know why. Sure As an example, too. Tom, the, the reason we're doing this is because you asked. Not because we got some random email. It's because you're a listener and you've, we've engaged with you. And right. we want to make sure that you don't, you, the one listener, one listener, we're willing to, you know, give a, an hour of our time because. Uh, you've been great to us. Yeah. We, we know you recommended our show to hundreds of people. So. Yeah, I have. I have. But you, you immediately responded with an enthusiastic yes. I thought, oh, my God, I can't get lawyers my own speakers to commit, but thank you. But thank you guys for, well, this. you couldn't um, see us rolling our eyes. <laughs> I, could, I, I assume that once again, my self-esteem. So, but so, so word of mouth is you're saying that's the best way to grow it. Yep. That's right? what, that's what the stats say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and that goes back to the whole thing about it. the more engaged your listeners are, the more they're going to tell people about it. Correct. Right? I mean, Correct. so okay. that's the point. Yes. Yeah. That's the whole point. Um, Let's see. We got we got plenty of time here. So, so okay. How, uh, so I, I wanted to explore too, like audience engagement. How it? Oh wait, I wanted to talk about Facebook. You're you're really good at um, monitoring it, and a lot of people might assume, with, as with a lot, like if I comment on Taylor Swift, which I would I'd never have done. I don't know why that popped into mind. I assume that when she likes it or writes back, it's not her. It's not. <laughs> but yeah, it's not Taylor Swift. No, that's my way of asking that. Damn it. Uh, yeah, but Almost it's you guys. Positive, it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's you guys. It is. Yeah, we actually we used to ha we used to pay somebody to monitor our Facebook group, and we stopped. Um, it honestly, like, it's we just set some very strict rules in our group, and I just decided. Um, a couple of years ago, you know what? This is our community. We can do with it what we want, and we don't really have any consequences if we just tell people they can't be a part of it anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. so we have, a, we have a like 12 really strict rules. And we, uh, if we see a thread going in a place that we don't like, I shut it down. And I'm very, again, very transparent. I'll post a note saying this thread's going in a place I don't like. So I'm shutting off comments right now. Please be nice to each other, guys. If somebody does something out of line, I just immediately kick them out of the group. I don't have feelings of, I mean, Granted, if I, if I know it's like a really, really loyal listener who's usually really, really great, I will hide their comment and reach out to them personally and say, hey, I hid your comment and here's why. Oh. If it's somebody I've never seen before, never heard before, and they just like routinely a jerk, they're out. I just, I, I, it's very, very important to me for that group to feel safe and to be about our show and to not go into areas where people are going at each other. That has been the key to maintaining it's, uh, I think it's, it's, it's health. Right? And, and to be clear, what we're talking about is not our regular Facebook page. We created a group. Yeah. So people have to ask for, for, for entry. It is a, a well manicured garden. Yes. Closed off garden that we prune uh, and weed, but it's also, it's, it's nice and it's uh, smart and uh, supportive because that's the way we've made it. I imagine that you might, if you, the quality of the group is different than a QAnon Facebook page. And you could probably guess why, because it has to do with the quality of the people that are there and the way that you, you handle it. And uh, it's, while it's great for you as, you know, the administrator to throw up content in that group that people will read, it's just as important to comment on the things that they're putting in and liking all that stuff. Uh, to show that you're engaged with them. Yep. Yeah. It, it, it takes on the, the same tone as you guys come across with, with your podcast, you know, yep. you're, cor you're cordial to each other. You have criticized other podcasters 
uh, but it's always respectfully. Um, uh, Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say to maintain almost the, always to maintain the voice that you have. If you're writing newsletters, you have a certain voice, uh, whether it's snarky or very, you know, uh, academic or whatever, and you should transfer and repeat that voice mimic that voice in uh your social media well, hopefully it's you i mean it, it well yeah it, but yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right um i, I want to ask a bit more about uh audience en engagement and some of the mon monetization that uh kevin you started jumping into it which i appreciate but it looks like we've got some some questions bruce are you there do you want to uh share those with us Bruce. Bruce. I don't see a Bruce. Bruce is renewed. He's renewed. He's on mute. Bruce, do you know you're on mute? Okay, hell with it. I'll read him. Let's see what we got here. Bruce, Bruce. I'm here. Sorry, guys. That's okay. All right. So I uh, I was scrolling up to try and find Agnes's question here. Um, so Agnes's question is: Have you done any live podcast recordings with an audience? And what differences and how you present when allowing an audience into the video as well as audio. So it's sort of a two part question there. We have, uh, and we really like doing them. Um, I would, how is it different? I mean, we, we've done live to tape recordings of both of our, our regular show and our firewall show. I would say that it's fun because then the audience who participates gets to see how the sausage is made and we'll say, oh, so you're going to see mistakes. You're going to see us do retakes. You're going to see all that stuff. And it is, they actually really like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also usually make time at the end for like a Q&A and let them participate. We've also done some live shows at conferences where we've played games with the audience and that's been really yeah. fun. What's your take on that, Kevin? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're talking about, I don't think you're, you're clear with the we've done it virtually yes we have so people can come in and those are your you know mostly your super fans so they do want to see the uh peter jackson get back version <laughs> of you uh doing your sound check and all of that we have done live shows when people did that sort of thing yes. it was sort of quaint huh uh i like virtual better yeah. frankly what what <clears throat> excuse me what a lot of other podcast companies and podcast shows have heard and we've heard that just a little bit is that the audience doesn't necessarily care for live shows in part because you're breaking format. Um, it's not the, the show that they tend to love. So we try to stick. Oh, to put it in your feed. You mean to put it in your feed. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it's to, uh, you may think it's a very special episode, but to your, to some of the listeners, they're like, Oh, but you're not doing the things that I like. So what the live show tends to be, as much as possible, as close to the show. And in fact, the last couple ones you did, Rebecca, you insisted that we do not mention ahead of time that it's a portion of it, the whole thing is a live show right. because you think it turns people off. I do think though, it, it is very good. The live show itself, whether it's virtual or in, in person um, is good for audience engagement. That's mm -hmm. primarily what it's for. But there was talk again, before the whole world changed about we could do three cities. We could go New York, LA, Chicago, or Dallas or something like that. And we were trying to set up a sponsor to pay for all of that. And no, we wouldn't fill a giant, we wouldn't fill the grand old Opry. It might be very small, but again, we're engaging in these smaller groups and it kind of, you know, it kind of tells the rest of the audience that we value them. Yep. Yep. But I will say taping the show live. I mean, virtually, it's actually really easy because we can like right now, Kevin and I could be recording our end of this and it would sound just like our podcast because we're speaking into our mics. Um, we could be recording you on a separate track. You could mm -hmm. be recording yourself, Tom, and then send us your audio file. It could be very high quality mm -hmm. and we could mix the two together and it could sound exactly like our podcast. So if you're not playing to the audience, yeah. which is kind of what happens with, with live shows, but I do love live shows. And I love I them too. We can do them again. Yeah, I like them too. I enjoyed one, one that I joined, you were streaming it. I didn't know you all really were drinking during the podcast. So I, I, I like that. That's why we don't I, do that as much well, as we, anymore. We used to do it a lot more than we do now. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a few more questions here, Tom, if, 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 no, you, please. if you don't mind. No, uh, no. So Go ahead Matthew and interrupt me was, anytime, Bruce. <laughs> Matthew was interested in hearing a little bit more about the uh, tip jar contribution donation and sort of is there a clear functional way you'd recommend doing it? Is it more of a mention? 
and then handing off the reader to someplace? How, how does that work for you guys or how does it work for others? Yeah. So there's a couple of places you should put your links. So basically you can create a, um, you know, PayPal link. If you have a PayPal account or Venmo or anything like that, any of those services will allow you to create a link, you know, so, you know, let people pay you whatever, create a link to pay. Um, and then you can say right in the show, right up top, Hey, do you love this show? Consider giving us a tip, uh, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever you think is, oh, by the way, always suggest an amount. That's what something I've learned from public radio. When you don't suggest an amount, people will not do it. When you suggest an actual amount, people will do it. And then when you create your tip jar page, you can put other amounts if you want, but like they say explicitly, want to give the show a tip? Like, like, like what you hear? How about 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever works for you. Click the link right in our show notes or go to blank.com. So when you create a podcast, you actually have a show notes field that you can fill out on your audio host. Any links that you want people to go to, put them in your show notes because then they don't have to leave their listening experience in order to do the thing you want them to do. You can also put it on your website too. So they, maybe they file it away for later and put it later. up top. So yeah. it's easy to find yeah. to go right to our top. Patreon, go here. We put the link right in our show notes. Yeah. And then put it everywhere. Put it. If you have a newsletter, put it in the newsletter website, whatever else you do. You cannot do enough calls you, to action for tips. Yeah. Yeah. Look, when, when, uh, when I was again, back in commercial radio, we started a love song show like seven o'clock at night. It, listenership for radio is very small during TV prime time, but it was like, okay, you know, people supposed to call in and make love dedications and they started it. And for the first three nights, nobody called. And so, uh, uh, so Glenn Hollis, who was the host just said, uh, yeah. So Susan uh, says to, you know, that she loves Tommy so much. He just made it up. And then the phone line started ringing, ringing, ringing. People were listening. Yes. They just didn't. So when you do your first PayPal thing, even if nobody's done it, just say, thanks, Susan and oh, Tommy. Oh, yeah. Why not? <laughs> Prime the pump. Prime the pump. People are listening. And when they know people, when they know, when they know people are doing it, they will do it. You can actually you can say, thanks so much for those of you who have given tips so far. Susan and Tommy. <laughs> Real nice. people, real people There's are doing it. There's an ethical line right Not here. Not real just people, point that but out. real people. <laughs> oh, you're going for ethics now. That's why yeah. I, shouldn't have mentioned, I shouldn't have mentioned the alcohol. I, Bruce, like, is, I like specific calls to action myself. Good idea. We, we have at least two more questions. Um, one's from Allison. Um, if you're starting a podcast from the ground up, would you recommend using Anchor as a platform? Yes. It's the best okay. startup platform, period. They have oh, so nice. many great tools. It is fantastic. My son has a podcast and he hosts it on Anchor. It's so easy. The analytics are great. The link is easy to obtain. Uh, you're autom kind of automatically like hooked up with Spotify. It's a little bit tricky to put your anchor podcast on Apple Podcasts, but you can just Google how to do it. You'll be able to do it. Um, yes. Anchor is a hundred percent the best starter platform, period. I know people are sort of worried. I'm going to put my podcast up and it's going to get a million listens and I'm not going to be able to make any money on it. Um, <laughs> you know, or I mean, it'll grow organically. The good thing about anchor is that I'm like, SoundCloud or yeah. all these other places where you can put up a small podcast, there is a possibility to monetize through advertising with Anchor, be very small. It's sort of based on the size of your growing audience and, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll trickle in. So it's scalable though. So if you have a hundred usual listeners, it'll take, you know, a lot longer to make your first $15, but if it grows and grows and grows, then you, you have uh, there are tools there. Yeah, for you. there the, the the infrastructure is there for you for monetize. And then if you get a million listeners, you can say goodbye, anchor. I'm calling up um, Stitcher. Stitcher. Making an ad deal. Yeah, and they're gonna make an ad deal, and all of a sudden you're selling Casper mattresses too. <laughs> nice. And then Suzanne has. Thank you for that. That was very helpful. And Suzanne has this interesting question. Uh, you know, in the days of uh, virtual and remote work, where everyone has a phone call with faces on the screen and, and other video components. What are the distinct advantages of just audio? Well, I think there's this intimacy. Um, I think I'm going to, I'm going to, again, use the radio statistic. I think it's very close in podcasting. 90% of the people listening to the radio are doing something else. Yes. They're driving their car. They're at work. Walking. They're, walking, they're on public transportation. So you can take that. You can, you know, probably watch uh, a YouTube video on the subway if you've downloaded it or whatever. Can't do it on the treadmill. You can't do it, yeah. Not yeah. easily anyway. 
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you uh, can't do it on a walk. You can't do it on a track. You can't do it on a walk. Do it on a, a dangerous walk. <laughs> uh, so, so there's that. It's portable and it's much more intimate. Yeah. And people can't look over your shoulder and know what you're doing. Honestly, podcasting is a, is a solitary um, uh, enterprise. Yeah. So no one listens to your podcast like with somebody else unless they're in the car. It is like I'm an audiobook listener more than podcasts, frankly, but like, that's all I do in the shower on my walks. I'm doing the laundry when I want to ignore my family. It is the thing people do when they're alone. Uh, and it is the thing people do when they're in between activities. So if you want to reach somebody that like wants a quick hit, like get you when you're in between doing something else, they're not going to go like this. They're not going to pull up a video, especially if they're around other people, but they are comfortable sticking something in their ear and consuming five minutes of a thing at a time while they're in between other activities. Awesome. Uh, and, uh, and I encourage more questions, but I also want to hand it off to Tom to bring us home. There's one last question from Matthew. That's why, Rebecca, you mentioned you prefer virtual live podcasts rather than in-person podcasts. Can you just get into a little more? Oh, events, virtual events. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, I am, when we started uh, the pandemic, we were, we're very lucky because we have a studio in our house, obviously. We already had cameras because we had done a project with Facebook that we had to buy cameras for. So um, I love virtual events because it's easy for people to come. Um, and so we have actually attracted like some really nice audiences to our virtual events. People from Australia have been able to come to our virtual events. People from all over the country are just able to show up. And then at the last minute, so you know, if we're doing something, Crowdcast is the platform we use that we really like. If you're doing something last minute, you can send out a last minute invite to everyone in your Facebook group and say, by the way, this thing we're doing, it's starting in an hour and it's accessible. So someone didn't have to buy a ticket or they could just register at the last minute and just show up. Um, one of the reasons I love the Crowdcast platform is that you can create a stage. I see someone else has used it. You can pull your listeners up on the stage. They're in the event with you. You can run it like a little TV show, dismiss them happily, um, you know, make them participate without it being like the, the work meeting zoom situation so it feels more like a show um bringing somebody up from the audience was way cooler before everybody started using zoom yeah it's like oh it's magic yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah, zoom is actually good for events too, yeah but. crowdcast though that is behind our paywall for our patreon listeners and if you don't know what patreon is uh well we probably don't have time to go into it but google it but also what you could do which we started doing was Facebook Live. Yep. And when the lockdown first hit, we did every night, we did a Facebook Live. And we we have, a, you're not going to be able to see this perhaps. This is our telephone number that we got. It's a- uh, Seven bleed bag one. Yeah, the pneumatic device, pneumatic, the uh, pneumatic device is seven bleed bag one, which just happened to be <laughs> what Google Voice sent to us. But you could do it on Facebook Live. We were able to bring people in. We took live we calls. Took live calls for, for once. But, you know, you don't need to do that. You can just react to people in, in the, you know, in, in the, um, the, the, the chat. I'm sure there are other. By the way, you can events. stream a Crowdcast or a Zoom to Facebook Live as well. You can do a, You can do an event on any almost any platform yeah. and stream it to Facebook Live. You can just Google how to do it. It's not super hard. Like it's just it requires like one little interface thing. It's actually not that hard. Yeah. And I think there is a way on Zoom because we, we did this uh, with the cast of Law and Order. Yes. Where they did a Zoom, but it wasn't, it was just them. You couldn't jump in and all of a sudden and like ask, uh, ask the page the Mercus and where she got all those great people in. Mm -hmm. Give them the link and you do your thing and you could just do a, a, a monologue like we're doing or you could bring people in and have it, you know, be a, a wild round table. Again, it's a great way to engage your audience. And you don't have the stage fright that everybody used to have. Like, <laughs> you remember like how before the pandemic, like you, you used to have to talk on a mic in front of people, like you'd have that feeling of like a little bit of nerves. Yeah. Like no one has that anymore. It's so great. Everyone That's is true. so used to looking at a camera and talking. So it's just that now. It's like it's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you you mentioned you mentioned Patreon. I would like to know because uh, monetization is near and dear to everybody's hearts on this call. Um, what what about uh, what how's Patreon work? Uh, Patreon is a subscription service where you. I'll tell you, it only works if you provide additional content back behind the paywall. So it's a, it's a subscription platform. I really like Patreon. There are alternatives, but Patreon does take the smallest percentage of your membership 
um, subscription money. So I would highly recommend Patreon. It's also like used by everyone. So users are very comfortable with the Patreon platform. If they are on your Patreon, they probably have other Patreons that they support. You can set up levels, a dollar a month, $5 a month tiers. Um, and then, you know, by the way, you should only have one or two tiers. That's the best practice. Uh, before, before you get it, I don't, I don't think we've explained what Patreon I'm, is. I am. Oh, it's okay. Subscri- so you're talking about the, the monetization. <laughs> you get, like, you what get, is it? You get Tell to set up what it is. Are you guys you, married? You're married. Okay. You get to set up a membership, a membership service for your listeners or users where they can subscribe to get additional content from you behind a paywall. So they can become a member or a subscriber, whatever you want to call it, a patron for $5 a month or $10 a month. And in return, you can decide what they get. You can give them nothing, which I would not recommend because we did that for a while and we had no patrons, or you can create a special bonus episode of your podcast weekly or an additional newsletter weekly or whatever you want. We have a lot of stuff in our Patreon because we found out we needed to in order to really like boost up our membership. But if you do something special for people, if people love you and what you're doing has value to them, um, you know, you can create an ad free version of what you're doing or but I would actually recommend just more of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, People will subscribe there and you can make a little extra cheddar. Patreon is not exclusively for podcasters or uh, video people. They have that, but it's artists, it's musicians. So even if you're just, um, you know, providing uh, uh, written content like a newsletter or something like that. You could do that too. It's probably a better way to have a paid. It's like, it's like pre Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but you know, again, it's it's a way to uh, to monetize that. There's, there's actually Patreon has a new feature where um, if you give them again a different percentage, uh, they will automatically fulfill like uh, gifts for uh, for patrons. So if every if you get people to sponsor you at the twenty five dollar level. For three months, you know, they will send them your mug. Mm-hmm. You can design the mug. You don't have to do anything. You just give them a design, you know, things like that. So That's there are cool. ways to reward the listeners. That's very cool. Okay. Yep. We really so, like it. Yeah. And this, there's also, by the way, messaging tools in Patreon. Also, by the way, you get all the data. You get all mm-hmm. the email addresses of your patrons mm-hmm. so you can download oh, them, right. upload them to your email platform like MailChimp, tag everybody in there as a patron. So if you send out a newsletter, you can actually create like a dynamic block that only the Patreon people see. Like you can do a lot like to make, to really cultivate that group and treat them really special. Yeah, that's important. I mean, because when I, when I approach people about either being on it or maybe sponsoring it or something, they want to know, can I find out who's listening? I'm like, no. Not with a podcast, but um, but I've tried some other things where uh, I've got a LinkedIn page where I can, now I can see who's at least following it. But yeah, That's so why a newsletter is great because a newsletter yeah. you do find out who's listening to your podcast. Mm. Imagine yeah. a newsletter, David. I can only see your face, so I can uh, <laughs> imagine if there were newsletters. I mean, this is how we um, this is how we all began, you know, either yeah. as writers or whatever for these crazy niche things that we did. What's well, the podcast? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you, you, with podcasting, you, David, I keep saying this is this is our webinar. Okay? <laughs> oh no, I oh sorry. sorry. Uh, so <laughs> you, with with the with the podcast platform, you can't. There are analytics as far as geographic, um, so you can find out what percentage right. of or what number of your listeners are in New York yeah. and Los Angeles, or break it down to metropolitan areas. I you know the five major metropolitan areas in Scotland. I can tell you what our listenership is there over 30 days, a year, whatever. And Apple will tell you, um, I mean, Spotify will tell you how old people are, but they're all young on Spotify, so it barely, you don't pay attention to that. (laughs) Well, yeah, I'm on, I don't know if you can tell me, I'm on Buzzsprout. I don't know why I'm on Buzzsprout. Oh, somebody. Buzzsprout's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's just fine. It's fine. It's a fun sideways. You want a low cost, yeah. I mean, you can host your audio elsewhere and then run it through Buzzsprout to get an RSS feed to get analytics, right? I think you can do that too, if you like those analytics, but. I'd move I get anger. analytics from them. Yeah, I get them. <laughs> but anyway, I also get this thing. It was a podcorn or something. It's telling me about advertising opportunities. What the hell happened? Where did I go? Oh, You're still I just, here. I'm still here. You're still here. No, I just, my screen just went to a different screen. Um, I just, uh, hey, Tom, just so you know, we've got about four minutes left. And I just want to make sure we wrap up before we get cut off by the Zoom folks. So Okay, that's good. No, but um, 
but they, have you ever heard of Podcorn? It, it seems to be like they're looking for advertising opportunities for you. Is that anything? I, okay. I don't uh, know. I don't know. But I will say. Is it run by a Nigerian prince? I think <laughs> it is. No, I already sent my money. Okay. I would subscribe to the reputable podcast newsletters because they're not just about podcasts. They also have some good industry information. Um, I would say podcast the newsletter. Uh, what's Nick Qua's newsletter? Pod. Um, Hot Pod. Hot Pod is the best. There is a $7 a month subscription version of it that I would highly recommend. Um, and those are probably my two favorites right now. Podcast the Newsletter. Yeah, a lot of industry stuff. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, can you repeat those one more time? Podcast the Newsletter and Hot Pod are my two Great, favorites thanks. right now. <laughs> Somebody just typed in bleed bag. I don't, okay. Yeah. Seven well, bleed that bag. Was me. One. Okay. That was me. I wish that was your you. phone number. Yeah, no, thank you. That's Lead right. bag Seven. one. Sorry. Yeah, I'm paying attention. I promise I am. Well, are, Bruce, any other questions there? No, we've we've got we've answered all the questions. I I, I really, you know, we've got three minutes left. I, but before we get cut off, I just want to really thank Rebecca and Kevin and you, Tom, for this has both been very informative and enjoyable. I think you could podcasts say are <laughs> such an such an integral part to to adding to the mix of content. I think it's a fantastic uh uh, webinar that we've had on podcast, which I always joke that's a webinar on podcast, but yeah, no, it's, um, it's no, a webinar on podcast. I appreciate where we're all of your input, Rebecca and Kevin. It's a webinar on podcast where they're recommending we do newsletters. I mean, this is meta. You already um, have a newsletter. If you already have an audience, you will have an audience for your podcast because you can just right. convert people, share your link, and then people go right there. Yeah. And, and if you can give us just a few, like a few tips on equipment, because Rebecca, you're so, you're so good at this. You guys come from both come from yep. radio. Okay. Getting I researched started. this. Okay, this go. is the down and dirty cheap way. Three you need minutes. Four things. You need a microphone. You need a way to connect to your guest. You need audio uh, editing and you need a platform as far as microphones, unless you're going to come and make a build a big studio, you want a USB microphone, something that plugs into your computer. So Yeti is a great brand. That's what Tom has. But you can look it up better. Yeah, better sure. than the microphone, the better sure you're going to sound. Yeti, yes. Okay. Second thing you need is a way to connect to your guests. Unless you're going to monologue like Rush Limbaugh, you want to have somebody else in there. How do you connect to them? Another free web service is called Zencaster. Love it. Zencaster, not an ER, just an R at the end. It is very much like Zoom. You bring people in, but what's different is that everybody's audio is recorded locally so it's you're not recording the big mix of everybody with some people talking low and some people talking high you can take all those files and then you can mix them now you can take the whole thing called live to tape and just with all the flubs and the swears you could just take that and put it out in the world but if you want to mix in the music and take out the ums and ahs and whatnot you need to edit it and so you do um audacity with an au audacity that is a free uh, editing platform, you can do that, make it, mix it, make it sound right. And then Anchor is probably the best, um, uh, the best. Those are uh, all free. But these are all free. You got to buy the microphone, Zencaster, Audacity, Anchor. And if you want a slightly awesome. better, and you want a slightly better editing platform than Audacity, do Adobe Audition. You, you want to spend the money. You already it, have yeah. the Adobe suite for like Photoshop or whatever. Yeah. Just add Adobe Audition to it. That is all you need. It is fantastic. It has a lot of functions. It's fantastic. Awesome. That's a great way to finish. We've got we, people would have paid dearly for that information. So thank you so much. Wait a minute. We could have gotten paid for this. <laughs> yes. Put the tip jar up. Come on. <laughs> guys, thank cool. you so Patreon. much. Patreon.com slash partners in crime media. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, guys. This has been fantastic. Thank All you right, so much. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Rebecca, Kevin. Thanks.